Welcome to the Sentai Podcast with your hosts, Sam and Jay. We're here to discuss our favorite anime, interview industry figures, and a whole lot more. Visit sentai.com slash podcast to see what we're all about. Today, we're interviewing Kyle Colby Jones, English ADR director for Made in Abyss. Hello, and welcome to the Sentai Podcast. I am Jay Perez. I am the event manager, and with me today is... Hello, I'm Tom. I'm in uh, Sentai's theatrical and marketing departments. And I am Kyle Colby Jones. I am uh, ADR director. Yes, Kyle Colby Jones is the infamous ADR director behind Made in Abyss and many other <laughs> anime dubs, including Is It Wrong to Try to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon, A Hero No Sora, Food Wars, and many more that I can't even name because we would be here for hours because kyle's been doing this for so long thanks i think <laughs> kyle uh tell us a little bit about yourself give us a little introduction um so i started at adv many many moons ago and got to work on uh the original saint Seiya, the original um uh, uh kino's journey and uh many other things and um then Took a break, went back to advertising for a while, and as a copywriter, and then now I am back with Sentai, and um, working on more stuff. So it's been fun. I got to, uh, I've gotten to do this twice now. So you're pretty much you're one of the madman for madmen, what you're saying? Uh, I did get to go do some New York advertising. Yes, I, I didn't do as a. Uh, as much of that nefarious stuff that they like to do in the show. Because it was the 80s, not the, you know, 60s? Um, well, I was in the uh, late 90s. Uh, I'm not that old, Jay. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> you're older than me, you're a dad. <laughs> but uh, how did you actually get started into AD, ADR directing with ADV or, you know, recording audio well, actually, I got a surprise phone call. I, oh, before that, I got my, I had my boss walk into my office and say, I'm about to give you a phone number, and uh, I'm afraid I may never see you again. And it was uh, Stephen Foster from ADV Films and asking to see if I wanted to do anime instead of ads. And, well, I haven't seen her since, my boss. I'm sure they miss you every day, huh? <laughs> <laughs> they don't know who the heck I am. The um, and neither do I, for that matter. But uh, the it was from doing radio and TV spots and ads where the the link is. So working in a studio, working with actors, and uh, writing scripts to fit certain time frames and things like that really came in handy. And as far as a skill set is concerned. Well, yes. Uh, can you also tell the fans, the guests, what an ADR director actually does? Okay, so we have Japanese materials come in, a show, and we will strip down the audio so it no longer has the uh, Japanese actors in it, and uh, we replace that. So first it gets translated, but that doesn't necessarily fit all the mouth movements um, because Japanese and English are so different, and... Then it gets rewritten a second time to add uh, colloquialisms and uh, match the lip movements. Um, and then we pull in the actors. They get to see it and hear it. And then we place things over the top. It comes from automated dialogue replacement, which is kind of an antiquated term, which they still use a whole bunch in movies. Most of your uh, big action films especially are going to be uh, shot and then they go into the studio and re-record their voices because you can't can't hear them over the explosions and all the grunting and sword And name. IMAX cameras are loud as hell. Yeah, they are. <laughs> it's a big film, okay? And we... So, you, there is a ADR script writer, but when you're recording, you also do additional oh, yeah. edits in because it's different when you're actually there, right? Absolutely. Things, uh, it's very fluid. So when the, at least how I like to do it, I know that some folks are keep trying to keep it very strict. I like to let it morph and move and turn into, you know, the actors there, the sound engineer is there. Um, 
and I'm there, and we all get to have a say in what comes out on the end. So moving on towards Made in the Abyss, how did that start for you? What were your introduction? Did you think, oh, this looks like a cute show, and then go, oh, oh. oh. oh yeah. yeah, I certainly followed that roller coaster with anyone who has seen this thing. Um, and I don't want to give anything away, but yeah, it starts out very sweet, and it slowly gets darker and darker and stranger. I think actually I got you all the manga when you started recording it way back when, right? Uh, yes, and um, <laughs> uh, since I can't read, I uh, skipped that part and went straight to the show. That sounds like Kyle. <laughs> no, uh, it's a it's a very mesmerizing show. It looks fantastic. Um, that was one of the first things I noticed, just how gorgeous it was, and the music was fantastic. And you know, the characters all had very um, recognizable arcs and um, personalities. That was great. I mean, it's one of those when you see it, you go, oh, this is one of those special treats. So you put on the white gloves and get to work. Well, I don't think you'd do anything without white gloves, Kyle, because everything <laughs> is masterpiece. Well, when I dance, I only wear one. Live long the prince. <laughs> Long live the prince. That's better. Yeah. <laughs> so when you started casting for Made in the Abyss, what were you looking for? Um, well, we needed kids, lots of kids, and that's always difficult. Um, did you get real orphans? We did not get real orphans. Uh, you know, we tried, but they kicked us out. Um, but the uh, people, we have our go-tos, and we... Um, that we know can do children, and uh, by and large, it's uh, going to be girls who do little, uh, do the voices of little boys. Um, but finding little girl voices is a little, is more difficult to find little boy voices. And so, finding our uh, our lead, she uh, had to be very believable without getting to you. Just didn't you don't want to sound like a grown up trying to sound like a kid? Ha ha! You don't want it to. Because then it would be ridiculous, and then you can't really, you know, you're going to lose focus on the show. And that's the last thing you want. First thing you want is uh, no one notice you're even there doing it. They should be in the story. When you do your job right, people don't even notice they're watching a redone something, pretty much. Yeah, that's my goal. <clears throat> so, so you've directed the Main Embus series, and now three movies. How did you prepare to come back to the world to do the movies versus when you first started the new title? Uh, well, um, I was terrified that for the first time just to do it. And then as it was coming around again, uh, I was even more so because now I knew um, what it, you know, it had lived up to his expectations. It was well received. And now we had to do it over again. And sometimes that's even harder. So and, consider that the anime of the year for that year, I remember you had to go out to San Francisco, correct? Yeah, I got to announce the uh, following year's winner. That was fun. <clears throat> and I got to take my wife with me. She's a great lady. Always a fun time <laughs> with her. I would have to agree. So really, the coming back to the, the movies, it, you felt even <clears throat> more pressure because you knew the what was at stake. Yeah, and I had seen how just how cool that uh, the beginning was the uh, the series itself, and I knew we were going to, you know, for the original filmmaker before I saw it, I knew they were going to have to, you know, they got to take that next step forward and be even a little more made in a piss than they were before. So I was very excited on that aspect to see it because I got to see it before a lot of people. That was fun. And seen it a lot of times, I remember. <laughs> yeah, I get to watch these things over and over again. Speaking of the movie, what was the difference for you from directing the series versus the movies? Um, the movies, and this is actually where I started at ADV a long time ago, was doing live action movies like monster movies, Gamera and things like that. And so a movie, it allows you to get the whole thing in your head at once. Whereas if you're doing a 24 episode series, then that's a lot of information and it's hard to do all in kind of one 
sitting. 60 plus, uh, or six plus hours versus... Right, a two to... <clears throat> two or two to three hour thing right exactly yeah. and so whenever you're having a session with someone most of the characters are gonna be done in one session and so you can kind of give them the whole story arc uh, and have it in and out and it's very cohesive so to me that part's a little easier yeah and now i do have some fun questions these came straight from our lovely tom because i know his writing style very well and Tom he wanted is to ask, <laughs> I tried. Who, who's best dad, you or Bondrude? Oh man, <clears throat> Bondrude, he uh, he has a lot a lot more kids to deal with than I do. So you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it's him. I don't know what I would do with that many children running around. I mean, you got the two, and every time I turn around, one of them's getting older. Yeah, they're getting tall. My son's almost my age. So, you've seen and you've read Made in the Abyss. Who is your favorite character? Ooh. Um, I, of course, it's hard not to like uh, Rico. Um, just being so... And, and Brittany Lotta did a fantastic thing. She was a shoe in once we heard her. Um, but uh, I think deep down, I have a... I have a weird little spot for uh hang on i am for christine otten and ozen deep cut i don't hear that very often <laughs> usually it's nanachi yeah oh totally that's anywhere we go Brittany um <clears throat> karbowski is getting hounded and uh most of the apparel and everything is going to be nanachi related so you're go ahead tom Oh yeah, but o- Ozen, that's a that's a bold choice. <laughs> but, <laughs> if, but, but if she's yeah. your favorite, she's your favorite. Uh, yeah, the and what's weird, and maybe it's Christine Naughton because when it comes to a Kame Ga Kill, it was also our Ice Queen and uh she voiced her as well. But um the thing about Ozen is she just I don't know, has this mystery about her and she's kind of split in her just kind of emotions and feelings towards uh well basically everybody because she's she's seen some stuff and uh she knows it's a rough world out there and she's not scared to share that with anyone who she comes across and but at the same time you can tell that she uh you know her, her like her little uh assistant maruk um she takes care of her and you know whips her also so <laughs> So you like the parental figures, is That's what you're it. telling me. <laughs> I, I guess so. Or just mysterious ones that, and where you don't really know what you're getting yourself into. So when, so when the the Maruk shorts came, you know, attached with Dawn of the Deep Soul. How? I mean, was that interesting? Just getting to see like what Ozen and Maruk are up to with their own little side story. Totally. Um, it was, and we got to go back to the village and meet some of our old friends in there which is fun because i did ultimately miss our um our orphanage kids because as we get farther Mm -hmm. and farther away from them they uh they kind of fade away but the uh (laughs) those shorts did let us get to see them again and get a deeper look yeah into our ozen and maruk relationship i think that brings up a good point it's such a you know, engaging story. You forget that there's a whole city up there, you know, life's going on. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and you know, I, I don't, when we get what Habolg and, um, even the lady who runs the orphanage there, uh, they all have, they're very in-depth characters with, uh, out, you know, telling you much. So it makes the show so great. And if someone's a huge fan of Made Abyss and loves, your, what you did with it. What is another title that you would recommend for them? Ooh, well, if you like things to be weird, which I like weird things, um, Land of the Lustrous is uh, pretty fantastic. Um, you've got, uh, let's see, let's see, Princess Principal has a also very cool um, animation and a yeah. very engaging world as well yeah and much more steampunk though 
yeah, there's some steampunk going on, and you know the it's British mysteries, and each episode is, is its own little discovery or a uh, crime to solve or what happened. Not to digress too much, but can you talk about um, getting British voices for that show? Oh yeah, it was <clears throat> it was certainly a challenge, but uh, one we you know, I kind of felt we needed to do because part of their spies and they need to go throughout England and uh, you know blend in and if everyone was speaking the same English English American English then it really wouldn't make sense so we went to our acting community here it's a, there's a lot of stage uh, actors in Houston and we had a voice coach come in and that way we could have someone who spoke um, the British English, your Queen's English, and then go to Cornwall, and then go to Liverpool, and change her accent to. You meet. didn't want no uh, Cockney accent for Mary Poppins, you know, sweep <laughs> Jack up there. We had to, yeah, we had to be sensitive to what that's going to be, and it was an amazing challenge. But so glad we did it. I, it's one of the shows that I still go back and plug in and watch again. Same with Made in Abyss, for that matter. So. Back to me in this. Mm -hmm. In your view, in your mind, what do you think is at the bottom of the abyss, if there is a bottom? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, well, <clears throat> I would, and this is, you know, just me speculating. I, I think the deeper you would go, you, you know, the harsher the uh, return back up is. So. I don't see any way you could get back up unless the bottom of the abyss is the answer to how you get back up. So you just, it's a donut. Yeah. You're going to, you get there and go, oh, now I can get back to the top. Now what am I going to do? <laughs> so now that we've gone deep into the abyss, here's another <laughs> deep, deep question for you. Okay. For our audience fans, Kyle is the biggest fan of puns, so I have to dig them in there for him. <laughs> what are some of the main themes of Made in the Abyss, in your opinion? Well, well you definitely <clears throat> have uh, this family thing. What does family mean? Because we're an, or you know, an orphan, and we're looking for our mother. We're traveling with a robotish sort of thing and then a whatever Nana Chi is, right? And that sort of becomes the family as as, as we've left um, our orphanage family and in search for our real family. And so that, has, I believe, will have a lot to do with if we ever find Mom, that could be part of the big question. And even Ozen kind of has is a familial so I'm almost like an aunt uh an aunt if you will um who had to help you know with uh with this rico child along the way so and of course our bondrood uh dad of the year best dad only dad right yeah and uh other than family of course it's a a conquest it is certainly a journey show about finding yourself finding out who you are. It's a growing up, realizing the world is not all cute and Oh no, it is not. <clears throat> there's there's an ugly side. Yes. So our last question, and this is really open ended, so you can talk for as long as you want. What oh. haven't you been asked about me to this that you're dying to tell everyone? <coughs> um hmm. let's see, I've been asked a lot about it. Um no one has asked. Hmm. Hmm. All right. You said I could talk as long as I want, and I haven't Let said anything. I haven't said anything yet. This is the right. part you'll be editing out, I suppose. Sorry, Connor. <laughs> Thanks, Connor. Uh, um. I, uh, hang on, Jay. Let me let me think about that. Um. Hmm. Oh. Okay. No one has asked me about uh, what is outside of the town of Orth. It's always what is down in the abyss. So people came from 
somewhere to settle in Orth and then go down. And there's this one part um, that we are slightly outside of the abyss and some changes happen. And no one has asked me about what that is or why that is. And not that I can tell them because I don't know. Um, but to me, that's just a big question that I have. And I am curious to see if the story takes us up and out instead of always down and in. So your question kind of is, what else is in this strange world beyond this deep hole? Yes. Why <clears throat> and why are people drawn to it? Other, I mean, we have it as you know the relics is why the town is there and they make their money off the relics. Well, who are they selling them to? Why do they want them? That sort of thing. So why are we all here, Jay? Because your wife said so. Oh, yes, yes, ma'am. I I think the question is that it leads to is. The world of Made in Abyss has a lot more to tell us and a lot more we want to know. Yes, totally. And they could probably make this thing go on forever if they wanted to. And I'd keep watching. But as Tom, uh, yeah, as we, or go ahead. Yeah, but at, like we've seen with the the Maruk shorts, I mean, there is a lot more to this world. If we get some, we get twelve prequels green lit that explore the, <laughs> <laughs> the other aspects of, around or that i would be fine with that yeah i mean like you're saying that the how many were there four or five little shorts but it let you realize mm -hmm. that oh we could have a whole series about the, just these two and their whole adventure together yes and i think that's a testament to the storytelling the writing the world building that big time even the characters we see very little of are so well developed yeah, it's really something else. And storytelling, like you're saying, that's <clears throat> that's the key. And with that, I think we'll wrap up. Uh, anything else you'd like to tell the fans, Kyle? Um, keep watching anime. That's what I'd say. And there's all the things I want to tell you I can't. And I'm working on a show right now that I can't wait for people to see. Well, I know if they want to find out about it they can follow high dive or sentai on every social media platform absolutely they uh, will announce the new shows and who's working on them and with that we'll see you guys next time okie dokie bye bye thanks for listening to the sentai podcast this episode was brought to you by high dive where you can stream thousands of hours of anime for 4.99 a month and your first 30 days are free Special thanks to Kyle Kobe Jones for being on the show. Thanks to our host, Sam and Jay, our producer, Tom, and our editor, Connor. Thanks for tuning in.